Now on to the second shelf, which will continue with my unread fiction. And then it will go into my unread nonfiction. Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. The Light Between Oceans by M. L. Stedman. Embers by Sindora Murai. The Fifth Season by N. K. Jemison. And this one I actually haven't cracked open yet, but I'm excited to get to. There's just a bookmark there from when I bought it. Since We Fell by Dennis Lehane, I've read two or three of his books now, which have all been really good. But this one's not as good, but I'm still really excited. Books 1 and 2 in the War of the Roses series by Con Eagledon. The Book of Strange New Things by Michael Faber. Poison the Pilgrim by Oliver Pooch, and this is um, part of the series um, in earlier in the video I hauled another one of his books, the books just aren't together. Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. I've read um, Slaughterhouse Five and absolutely hated it, but as you guys know I like giving authors two chances, hence why this one is on my shelf. Distant Hours by Kate Morton. I also have not cracked into this. Blood and Beauty by Sarah Dunant. I did crack into this. Wasn't right timing. Sanctuary by William Faulkner. The Game by A.S. Byatt. Baldolino by Umberto Eco. The Prague Cemetery by Umberto Eco. And Foucault's Pendulum by Umberto Eco. Threats by Amelia Gray. The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. Tinkers by Paul Harding. The Great Stink by Claire Clark. City of Dreams by Beverly Swirlin. Janet Malcolm. If if Iphigenia in Forest Hills. Anatomy of a Murder Trial. Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. Dr. Faustus by Thomas Mann. The World According to Gulp by John Irving. I've read The Side of House Rules and quite enjoyed it. Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. The Sun Also Rises really pissed me off when I read it in high school and then I had to read it in English for college again and I had a great teacher and I could appreciate it. Didn't love it, but I could appreciate it. Pain Place by Grace Metalius. Metalius. Dr. Zivago by Boris ba Pasternak. Dragon Wick by Anya Sutton. Winter Queen by Boris Ackerman. Night Watch by Sarah Waters. Miss Jane by Brad Watson. The Book of Evidence by John Banville. Beyond Black by Hilary Mantle. Still waiting for that third book in the Thomas Cromwell series. Starting with Wolf Hall, with Wolf Hall. Civil Warland and Bad Decline by George Saunders. 
Silent Companions, a novel by Laura Pucel. The Play of Death by Oliver Pucht, and um, A Hangman's Daughter Tale, so really all three of these books really should be sitting together. I think the guy's Polish, so I'm definitely pronouncing his last name wrong. Uh, the Mandibles, A Family, 2029 through 2047, uh, um, by Lionel Shriver, and at the bottom it says, In God We Trusted. I'm really excited to get to this. I'm also really excited to get to this one, which is The People in the Trees by Hanya Yanagihara, same author who wrote A Little Life Which Destroyed My Soul. The Physician by Noah Gordon. So I don't know if I showed this one well enough, but yeah. Uh, Beats the Devil by Glenn David Gold. It's a collection of, um, of like, uh, illusionist. Oh, no, maybe it's not a collection, but yeah. Sorry, I'm not explaining the books here, I'm just showing them. Possession by A.S. Byatt. And The Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier which I thought about reading this month, and I might still read this month. Um, over here, this is the only, oh, I guess I should probably show you guys. And so, uh, on this shelf, um, this is the only shelf that is double stacked, and that's because, um, I didn't want to fill up my bookshelves too fast, <laughs> and Stephen King, um, I have a lot in his, the mass market paperback, so I'm going to show you the ones in front and then the ones in the back, which will include some Stephen King and some not Stephen King. So we have The Stand which I am currently reading. We have the first, uh, I don't remember how many are in this series, but we have the first three books in the Dark Tower series, which I've heard is just a, a mashup of every type of genre possible. So we have The Gunslinger, which is book one, The Drawing of the Three, which is book two, and The Wastelands, which is book three. We have Desperation. The Regulators. Also, I have mentioned this multiple times on my channel, but I'll mention it again here, of course. Um, I want to read all of Stephen King's work, which is why I own so many of his books. <laughs> the Dark Calf. Firestarter. Roadwork. Insomnia. Nightmares and Dreamscapes, which I believe is a collection of short stories. Oh. And I accidentally, I think I was given one of these, um, so I was actually given two, uh, uh, ended up with two copies of this, um, so I just decided to hold on to them for now, so, yeah. Needful Things. Christine. The Dead Zone. Pet Cemetery. Joyland. Mr. Mercedes. And Dr. Sleep, which is the sequel to The Shining, which I enjoyed and um, thought was okay. And then the other books that I haven't mentioned, the last three books that are not Stephen King on the shelf that I haven't mentioned is The Light Keepers by Abby Gen, which is such a beautiful cover. I really love it. Shining Girls by Lauren Bukes, which I loved this book as well, too. This is what I really want to get to as well. Um, oh no! Uh, yeah, Shining Girls. And La Rose by Louis Eldridge. Eldridge. <laughs> Villa Triste by Lucretia Grindel. The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. The Death of Virgil by Herman Broch. Neuromancer by William Gibson. The Tin Drum by Gunther Grass. Shades of Grey by Jasper Ford. York by Edward Rutherford.
The Red Tint by Anita Diamant. Whoops, move the camera. <laughs> the Luminaries, yeah, The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. A Fine Balance by Rohinton Mystery. A Million Little Pieces by James Frey. King Rat by James Clavel. This is part of a series, um, and this is, if you read them in, I think, you can either read them in the order that they're published or in the order with the year that they take place at. And this one takes place during World War II. So, yeah. The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot. And I don't know why this one isn't with my other classics, so I'm going to be moving that. <laughs> White Noise by Don DeLillo. Sorry, I keep sh hitting the camera. Uh, Schindler's List by Thomas Keneally. Very good movie based on a true story. You will ball your eyes out. Shadow Country by Peter Matisson. The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood, which I may be reading in the next couple months. Child 44 by Tom Rob Smith. Horrorster. A novel by Grady Hendrix. The Savage Detectives by Roberto Bolaño. The Corrections by Jonathan Franzen. I have yet to read anything of his, um, and I, but I've, I've been wanting to. I've heard he's kind of heavy like David Foster Wallace. Uh, 2666 by Roberto Bolaño. The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. After reading East of Eden, which is one of my favorite books of all time now. Um, definitely top five. Um, or top ten at the very least. Um, I'm really excited to get to this. Hoodboiled Wonderland at the End of the World by Huki Murakami. So on this side, um, on this shelf, we have my PS4 controller and my TV remote because um, in this corner is where I um, normally have my chair. Um, I moved it to film this video and so it's really easy to turn on my PS4 because I just hit a button on my PS4 and the remote is already there. So that's where those normally go. Back to books. I have, um, the, oh my gosh, I keep hitting my camera, sorry guys. The Bone People by Carrie Holm. The Fourth Bear by Jasper Ford. Capital by John Lancaster. The White Tiger by Arivind Adiga. Dune by Frank Herbert. There's a movie coming out um, in the next year or two. Um, so I'll probably check it out um, and I definitely want to read it before it comes out. Uh, Foundation, um, book one in the Foundation novels by Isaac Asimov. The Given Day by Dennis Lehane. Dead Souls by Nikolai Gogol. The Tortilla Curtain by T. Corgesson Boyle. Molokai by Alan Brennett. We're All Completely Besides Ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler. Frog by Mo Yan. The Castle by Franz Kafka. Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel, who also wrote Night Film. Started this, but put it down. It wasn't bad at all, just, there's a lot of references, and sometimes when they reference a lot of literature stuff, I get really worried about spoilers, so. Six 
uh, uh, Six Fold by Hideo Yok Yokoyama, which has really pretty pink edges. Fresh Complaint by Jeff Lee Eugenides is his latest book, so I'm really excited to get to it because I've read all three and what I like to call his little trilogy, but now he has a fourth thing that came out, which is short stories. Um, so I guess I could still call his trilogy the trilogy, but yeah. Last of the Wine by Mary Reynolds started it. Here we have the Josephine Bonaparte collection by Sandra Gouland, and that includes Tales of Passion, Tales of Woe, The Last Great Dance on Earth, and The Many Lives and Secret Sorrows of Josephine B. Let me take these out so you can see, they're so gorgeous. Put those back later. Cryptonomicon by Neil Stevenson. I've heard this is really good. Oh my gosh, guys. Sorry about that. The Kindly Ones by Jonathan Little. I heard that's really good, but probably I'm guessing really hard to read because it's set during the war as well. A Separate Piece by John Knowles. Um, The People's Republic of Everything by Nick Mamatis. I got this for free at a library conference I was at, and I got it signed by the author, but it actually sounded really interesting, so that's why I didn't, I chose to pick it up. I wasn't just going to pick a book just because it was free. Um, I, Claudius by Robert Graves. There we go. The Just City by Joe Walton, which I need to get cracking and reading because it's right up my alley. I mean, hello. It's about philosophy, building that perfect city, which is one of my favorite concepts, or the, my, the favorite of my concepts in philosophy. Snow by Orhan Pamuk. A uh, Cancel Word by Alexander Soltz Solhenstein. Oh no, it got messed up. So many of my poor books got messed up even in the mood, even though I tried to be so careful. Um, and then V by Thomas Pynchon. And here we have the last shelf of my unread fiction. Battle Royale by Kushun Takami. Haven't cracked this open yet. The Name of the Wind by Pat Patrick Rothfuss. We have the uh, the Century Trilogy. So starting with one, book one, Fall of Giants. And I love these in hardback. Like these are absolutely beautiful. I'm so happy that I have them in hardback. Uh, Winter of the World. And this is set in it's a historical fiction and it takes place during World War One and maybe up through World War Two. I don't know. And then we have the Edge of Eternity. Um, and I actually really, really was enjoying these books. I just, for some reason, put it down. So they're quite good, and I do plan on finishing it. Um, yeah, I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's really interesting. I think it had really well-rounded characters. Lives of the Monster Dogs by Kirsten Bakis. Sophie's World by Joe Stein Goethe. If we go on a trip this spring, I think I'm going to take this book with me. Uh, Melody by V.C. Andrews. You guys, I've mentioned before how much I love the Flowers in the Attic series by V.C. Andrews. She's dead, um, and she has a ghostwriter now. Um, so I wasn't really sure what book to read next of hers. So I just at random at a used bookstore picked up this one. Roots by Alex Haley. Which, if you guys know, it's not really my thing. I don't like reading about slavery or anything like that. Um... In fiction, my fiction books, but um, this is such a staple of um, American culture. Um, it says the saga, I mean, it literally like the tagline is the saga of an American family, and um, so yeah. Legacy by Susan K. The 
The Kingdom of the Wicked by Anthony Bugas. All the King's Men by Robert Penn One. By Blood by Ellen Ullman. The Food of the Gods by H.G. Wells. I really, really liked The War of the Worlds by him. Um, and there's another one by him um, that I think I want to get to that I think I got on Audible. I was looking at to listen to on Audible. Um, but yeah. The Soul of Love and Techno. I was not going to pick this up, but when I was in New York, um, a friend um, like begged me to pick this book up because she absolutely loves it. So, If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I had one little thing spoiled for me while I was trying to decide if I wanted to read this book, so I'm hoping enough time passes that I forget all about it before I pick it up. And because I have such a poor memory, I'm sure that it's very possible for me to do that. The Charioteer by Mary Reynolds. The Crow Girl by Eric Axelsund. I absolutely hate TV looking, movie looking covers, um, but I've been wanting to read this for so long and every time I tried to go find it, I could only find it in this cover, so I said, why not? And then the last, last, last book is Vile Bodies by Evelyn Well. Which, spoiler alert for December's wrap-up, well, actually it won't be a spoiler because my December wrap-up will be coming first. Um, I'm really curious to see what I think of another one of his books because I just finished um, Brides Had Revisited um, and had mixed emotions about it. Um, yeah, so that concludes all my unread fiction. And I have 199 unread fiction books and that does not include my... Um, this does not include my penguin little black book penguin classics up at the top. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed part one. Okay, so you guys have now watched part one, which was all my unread fiction. Again, at the end of that video I said I have 199 unread fiction books, not including the little penguin black classics, which has 80 in them. So this is why there is no December book haul, and there will probably not be a January book haul. 2019 is literally about bringing my TBR down, but in a fun way. And I'll still end up buying books along the way, most likely, but um, probably way less. I'm gonna try and do a lot more challenges with myself. Um, but anyways, that's not what this video is for. Um, this video is for an introduction to part two, which is all my unread nonfiction. Um, as you guys know, um, I love nonfiction too. It's gonna be considerably less than all the unread fiction that I have, but it's still gonna be um, quite a few shelves. So uh, yeah, let's get started and I hope you enjoy. The Great Escape by Paul Brickhill. I started reading this, but put it down for later. Um, I heard about this, actually didn't even know it was a book at first. Um, I watched my, a movie with my husband, he really loves movies, and he showed it to me. And this was probably one of the best war movies I've ever seen. It's really fantastic. Um, and so when I saw that this was a book, uh, and it was in the bookstore, I had to pick it up. Alan Turing, The Enigma by Andrew Hodges. Again, I don't really like movie covers, but this one's so subtle, I really like it. Ten Days Shook the World by John Reed, one that I also plan on uh, reading pretty soon. Russian Thinkers by Isaiah Berlin. Democracy in America and Two Essays on America by Alexis de Tocqueville. The Life of Samuel Johnson by James Boswell. Um, <laughs> if you know anything about me, you know I love big books, so I'm pretty sure I was just drawn to this because I, it was free from where I got it and it was ginormous. So who knows? I'll probably end up just giving it away instead of reading it at some point, but I also could maybe just be in the mood for it one day. Anti-Oedipus, Capitalism and Schizophrenia by Gals de Lutz and Felix Gua Guattari. I really love this color, it's really pretty. And the top subject matter is just like, wow. Uh, because capitalism and everything like that, the kind of stressors that capitalism puts us under, um, does cause mental health problems. Um, 
So yeah, but not to, not to get away from that. Uh, the Book Lover's Companion, What to Read Next. So with a forward by Lionel Shriver. Um, so yeah, that's basically just what it is. Like, if you like this, read this. Um, so I would love to go through this once my TBO is whittled down a little bit. Um, we have in the political, um, collection, Civic Classics is what it's called. We have the Federalist Papers, um, read Federalist Paper 10. It's, um, pretty awesome. And, um, with the Federalist Papers, you can see a lot of the advice that our founders, um, well, if you're from the U.S., that our founders gave us that we completely didn't follow, which is why we're kind of in, um, bad situations now. We have no one to blame but ourselves. And then, um, Civic Classics, American Political Speeches, which I just would love to sit down one day and just spend all day listening to these speeches. Um, it'd be amazing. And this are books three and five, and at some point I really want to get the other ones as well. Risk, the true stories people never thought they'd dare to share by Kevin Allison and uh, contributors from a whole bunch of people. Dan Savage, Michael Ian Black. Um, the um, so this started off as a podcast um, and then it turned the stories into books. Empire of Liberty by Gordon Wood, a history of the early republic from 1789 to 1815. So the Oxford history of the United States essentially. And I love that. It's another big book. Man is Wolf to Man, Surviving the Gulag by Janusz Bardak and Kathleen Gleason. Guns, Dreams, and Steel by Julia Diamond, um, The Fates of Human Societies. And this is actually one that I read, or, or that I got right when I got back into reading, so a long time ago. And um, I did start reading it and then just fell by the wayside, but I still really do want to read this. The Anatomy of Evil by Michael H. Stone. The, Plant the Plantagenets, The Warrior Kings and Queens Who Made England by Dan Jones. A People's History of the Russian Revolution by Neil Faulkner. Thinking Fast and Snow Slow by Daniel uh, Kahneman. People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn. The Psychopath, Emotion and the Brain. Hallucinations by Oliver Sacks. So what's funny about him is I don't really like his writings and I only have read one book by him and I didn't really like it. It was the woman who mistook her husband for a dog or cat or something like that. Um, but he's like such a leading expert and so important in the field that, you know, I have to read some of his other stuff. The Code Book, The Science of Secrecy from Ancient Egypt to Quantum Crypto Cryptography by Simon Singh. Started this, never finished it. Um, I love codes. I love um, symbolic logic, which is a form of... Logic is more pure than math, essentially, and when I studied philosophy, I chose to study symbolic logic, and it was great, and it's a way to do coding and cracking codes and stuff like that. The Book of English Magic by Philip Cargolm and Richard Haygate. Um, again, started this, loved it, um, just didn't finish it. Um, so, learn the Druid Tree Alphabet, how to plot a ley line, how to perform a spell with candle magic, and just the history of all these things that run really deep in Europe and uh, really in, in England, specifically English history, and have influenced so many amazing authors. The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith, which, I mean, a little bit of political uh, um, economic philosophy, hey? Nice, nice light read before bed. Criminal Psychology, um, Beginner's Guide by various people, Ray Bull, Claire Cook, Ruth Hatcher, Jessica Woodhams, Charlie, Billy, Bilby, and Tim Grant. Picked this up a long time ago. The Light and the Cave, Plato vs. Aristotle on the Struggle for the Soul of Western Civilization. As a person who studied philosophy and a big philosophy buff, love, love, love this and cannot wait to get to it. Michael, oh, Discipline and Punish by, I think it's supposed to say Punishment, right? Um, by uh, Michael Foucault, The Birth of the Prison, More Philosophy. 
Another one by Foucault, Madness and Civilization. A History of Insanity in the Time of Age and Reason. And Anatomy of an Epidemic by Robert Whittaker. I read bits and pieces of this um, for school when I was in college um, at uni, and um, I just now wanted to read the whole thing. So, yeah.